Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. I take time and I write down all the things that I love on my eyes now. Best believe my list gonna be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand for. Yeah. We stand for. Oh, I am in this song. Look at how we've grown, how far we've run. Fifty as we strong and more to come. More to come. More to come. I'm going higher. Fifty years we're blessed with more to buy. Still reaching for more. Welcome to Edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The Center for Democracy and Good Governance is a sound organization established to promote and strengthen democracy. For too long now, or generally perceived poorly educated electorate, have fallen victim to the cheap and inferior propaganda of those seeking to hold others captive under the guise of democracy. Gladly, the CDGG uses education to help to actively pursue a sustainable approach to reorient our people towards the importance of electing and selecting people of good character to public life. Through edification, we will highlight the importance of education appropriate to our development, proper health care and facilities as our right, respect for law and order, not to mention upgrading our people's thinking so they could become qualified participants in the democratic process to their advantage. After all, Grenada's national constitution makes allowances for the ideal of free men to enjoy freedom from fear and want, which can be best achieved if conditions are created whereby everyone may enjoy his economic, social and political, civil and cultural rights. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. One
wonderful folks and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Edification, of course, the 210th edition of this beautiful program, if I may say so myself, on this fair Sunday, 24th March, 2024. Of course, you know, many of us can remember not too long ago, interestingly, um, 2024 started. Could you imagine? We are headed towards the fourth month already. Can you can you believe that? Good. Yet for all, you know, we're just marching fast onto the fourth month. When the year came, we all were thinking, hey, 50th anniversary. Wow, wow, wow. But that came, the day itself came and gone. Thank God we are celebrating this momentous occasion for one entire year. So we have a lot more activities to come. I just pray and trust that the progress you are making personally in your life complements the speed with which time is flying. Time waits on no one. Folks, remember what I love to admonish us all to do. Grow through life. Grow through your experiences in this short life instead of just merely going through. We were born to stand out, not to fit in. We were born to be at the head, not at the tail. We were born to be lenders, not borrowers. We were born for greatness and not to be the emblems of less or barely getting by. Each and every one of us was born to be that single member of our families to break the cycle of poverty. So let's get up and get. Stop waiting for a government to provide a feeding trough to keep you poor, vulnerable, and I dare say stupid. Good? That air walking here tonight, you remember what Scunter said? Right. Goodly folks, resisting structure and order in your life will not bring you true and lasting joy. I want you to remember, for you to encounter peace in your life, you must live with joy. Wake up with genuine enthusiasm for the one life that you are given until the day when you can't wake anymore. Proceeding through your day with passion because you love life. And of course, you love what you do and you do what you love. So you never work a day in your life. You see, genuine prosperity is only possible in an atmosphere of consciousness where order and structure abide. I always love to draw the example of Singapore, which is probably the most structured and orderly society on planet Earth. Our subculture inclination right here in Grenada to do what we want, aided and abetted by long pen politicians over the years, especially between 1995 and 2022, for the most part, has brought nothing desirous to any of us. Breaking the laws to make a living and operating in a country where the leaders were all lawbreakers does not do any good to the nation as a whole, except to turn its people into perpetually poor and vulnerable. We don't have to look too far to see this. 50 years on, and we have descended into a rude and raw civilization that mostly need a good taming. We are today products of an extended period of wayward leadership presided over by probably the worst kind the region has ever offered. The results are alarming today, where institutions have been mangled, people given jobs and positions to hold court with and for the inferior maximum leader who had his finger on the pulse of everything through them. All this time, none of them was able to develop capacity to do anything right. And those who came with any capacity and competency had to shelve them in order to survive under him for this woefully extended period. While the nation happily marched on to hell in a handbasket, 
Many people refuse to stand up because they say they had their rent and mortgages to pay. Their accustomedness to nonsense has them today in a stupor. Not being able to pivot and do what is right and proper during this transformative culture. Goodly folks, even though it is more difficult to accept what is right, the consequences for not doing so are undesirable, trust me. As we have been witnessing over this current nightmare of our post-election period, a lot of things are being uncovered today that a lot of you never thought existed. Oh yes, so as you join me today, we will explore quite a bit in this 210th edition of Edification, which promises to deliver your, your, your much needed dose of multivitamins, the mental multivitamins, like none other. So pull up your chair, settle down, settle down. Good, make some calls, tag some friends, do some more sharing. And let's get on with it. Our topic today, folks, allergy to what is right is not a valid argument against it. Too many of us seem to have missed the long-standing memo that tells us it is better to remain silent and thought a fool than to speak up and remove all doubt. Folks, haven't you noticed the duncest among us have the most to say. They have never mastered the art of spelling, writing, reading, and anything other. No discipline at all. And all those things aim to render them useless to our society because they don't have it. Yet for all, oh God help you, they speak the most and have the most opinions on everything. You could see them all over social media, according to Prime Minister Rowley out of Trinidad. Yang, 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 yang. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Nothing going on. Lights are on, but nobody's home. The dunces, the emptiest, have the most to say, running lives. They ventilate their dunceness regularly. And do not realize that social media required them to transfer what they want to say by typing, writing. You know, they have to write same. And without being able to do so, they render themselves totally unqualified to be taken seriously. Their inability to express themselves in writing has them running several live broadcasts to make up for their shortfalls. Not realizing that their very expressions will sell them out as lacking in the department of reason. All the evidence we need to support our suspicion of their lack in the areas of reading and writing. Now, those who insist on writing, oh God, Lord help you, their writings reflect their warped mentality devoid of any learning, whether from school or via a bringing in the home. Yet for all, they have an opinion on everything and everybody and quick to share. I just witnessed one commenting on Morris Bishop's wife pictured with Elimus Inspector Gilbert. Ooh, what a shame. Interestingly, from 1995 to 2022, for the most part, many of our people were allowed to degenerate into the undesirable effects and impacts they are having on our overall society today. There is this change. Because to change means to give up their path of least resistance. We live in a disheveled society where intelligent people are silenced so that stupid people won't feel offended. Intelligent people have become, for the most part, full of doubt, while the stupid people are full of confidence running all over Grenada. Those who read and conduct regular research when they speak, are considered crazy by those who do not and cannot. You see, sometime in June 2021, I recall sharing in one of my earlier editions of edification under the topic, fake is effortlessly embraced and real totally rejected. 
After all, the faker you are and the less genuinely accomplished you are in reality is the more friends you attract. Because if you make the mistake to be real, you are ostracized, maligned, and even belittled. Again, this could only be a product of our depraved education system and thus the careful design of our society to benefit the chief kakistocrat, our worst kind of leader ever, resulting in miserable dunceness of our entire society for the most part. Folks, the story is told of this young man who could not be more than 29, who was speaking of a certain leader that he loves and the way he handles himself and his role as leader in particular. He was listening, listened to by a wise senior who, after he was finished extolling the virtues of this demagogue of a leader, asked him his age. He confirmed the suspicion of the senior by saying 29, when the senior advised him that in as much as the men who carved out their place in international history may have dressed old timeish. That was the fashion back then. But they were actually younger than 29, probably even 29, and in some cases, just a little older. Folks, even in our neck of the woods here in the Caribbean, some of the people involved in frontline political leadership today presented themselves in their 20s. Right here in Grenada, Eric Gary presented himself with strong interest at the age of 26, 27, and by 29 was successful in elective politics. But this was 74, 75 years ago. In the case of Maurice Bishop, he presented himself on the ground and ready to go in 1970 at the age of 26. And six years later, elected to parliament and named opposition leader, 47 years ago. In the case of the old nastiness, he presented himself in 1972 at the age of 25. And though unsuccessful on his first attempt at elective politics, he became successful 12 years later in 1984. Good. 40 years ago, folks, and is still around as leader in frontline politics, throwing tantrums like a little spoiled child through vicious word salads laced with slackness and commonness. Don't talk about lies, speaking out of turn at funerals and daringly presenting stories that never happened while seeking to prove his relevance to be offered the opportunity to say something on behalf of the dead. My question to any youth who fall within the age group of 21 to 30, what are you doing taking a back seat, following anyone who is ripe and very much onto their 80s at a time when modernity regulates or relegates, sorry, such seniors at the back, at the back of the analog and obsolete lines. Are you prepared to sit on your smart devices, supping and LOLing, taking pictures and videoing fights and puerile nonsense while you take no active role in carving out the future you deserve? Come on, young people. Wherever you find yourself in life, I want to remind you that at some point in time, you made an appointment to be right there where you are. Your being alive today in an atmosphere where old, expired thoughts still feel they are relevant today as leaders is an appointment your very omissions contributed to. Your inactions and omissions contribute to you eating the bread the devil need today. Life is not all about fit and holiday and a good time. There is a time and a place for everything. 
as my mother used to tell her five bastard children. He who does not work in the day will work in the night. And if you don't want to work when you are young, you will work when you are old. All this time, she takes us to the window to show us the travel people, old with a little pipe in their mouth, throwing sand and gravel in the road. You want to be like them? Okay, be my guest. Don't do your schoolwork and see if you won't be working at their age, doing menial tasks. Okay, folks, you see where this is going. Very much in tandem with our subject matter today. And that is precisely why allergy to what is right is not a valid argument against it. Let's take a little break and we will come back with some more. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. If I take time and I write down all the things that I love on my island. Best believe my lips gonna be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand for, yeah. stand for. Oh, I love this song. Look at how we've grown up from the front. 50 years we strong and more to come, more to come, more to come. I'm going higher, 50 years we're blessed with motion fire, still reaching for more. motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver, 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 deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, wonderful, folks. Just keep standing by. We seem to have some birthday people in the house, folks. Pay them some reverence. Pay them some reverence because these days, you know, it's more fashionable to die than to celebrate a birthday. People are dying like flies. So let's, you know, join. Let's just... Welcome, everybody, and let's just have a wonderful time. While we're above ground, let's enjoy it. So welcome back. And for those of you just joining, I want to welcome you. Those of you who are joining for the first time ever, I want to, you know, wish you Godspeed. And thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. Hit the share button and comment, like, love, and even, you know, join the edification community. Active interaction. So let's have some of your interactions going back and forth. So blessings, blessings, blessings to all of you folks. God, it's really, really a wonderful um, opportunity to be with you once again, because once we are above ground folks, let's show that we love it. We don't have to tell people we love it as if to convince them. No, yet your actions prove that you're enthusiastic about life. You're passionate about life. And God knows it wasn't a mistake to wake you up this morning. So welcome back. Why are many unconsciously attracted more to negative news than positive news? Woo. You see, when we think about negative news, we think about people making judgments. Not necessarily about the people in the news, but about themselves. Negative news is attractive 
as it gives one a false sense of superiority. It makes you feel you are better than the people or situations in the news. It gives you hope as you have things others do not have or are not in as bad of a situation. It is contagious as so many people are attracted to the negative. Now, if you change your mindset, the negative news is now not attractive anymore. Now, if you change, Kim, let, let me tell you something here, folks. It's easy to change your mindset. Stop holding on to those things that are not working for you. They are not working, change them. Because if you keep on doing what you're doing, you will keep on getting what you're getting. When you read the negative news, you start feeling more empathy instead of anger, just because you changed your mindset. You can look through the negativity and see other people's points of view. It no longer fuels you, as you're more interested in seeing the positive instead. Overall, you have a choice of what you focus on when reading a news article. Do you want to focus on the toxic negativity or the hopeful positivity? I have stopped looking at any news altogether. In fact, it's been years since I have not looked at any local news on television. I have told you before I consider the presentations to be an assault of sorts, laced with poor sentence structure, distractions from poor pronunciations, poor self-presentation, the entire packaging abysmally horrible. When one is finishing, finished with listening to one, one has to be distracted with self and unconsciously contributed to a high level of mental discomfort and displacement. Just before bed, you think that's right, folks? Hell no. Not me. So I stopped looking years now. A matter of fact, the local news I, I, networks or whatever you call them, they are passing announcements off as news. They are sit in the studio journalists. They read what, is, what you send them. They're not going out. They're not investigating. They're not thinking and going behind the scenes of any news. Oh, hell no. That's too much work. As it relates to international news, the morbid nature of news the world over compelled me to turn away from mainstream media reports to leave my television off, totally off, for upwards of six years and counting. Of course, one will encounter international news items while scrolling social media. And I can safely say to you, I am in the know just by glancing at the headlines. I am therefore a headline consumer. If something piques my interest, I may view it otherwise. But I generally stay away from the news and any programming whatsoever that seek to interfere with my peace and rattle my emotions. Nowadays, people don't defend what is right. They defend who they like and can benefit from. Nowadays, people are mostly attracted to being parasites and they don't care what you think. Being broad daylight, they come in and beg. You know many people messaged me privately to actually identify with my experience with this fella that came and knocked my door with the heel of his palm looking for $20. And when I told him I could do better than that, $25, I could do better than that by giving him three vehicles to wash at $25 a pop. You remember what he told me? I tell you I want to work. Of course, if I $20, you, you, you're getting on. All your people with money like to get on too much. I had to run him from the yard. That is the, the phenotype we have in Grenada today. And go into the old nastiness to complain they ain't no work. Lie they don't no work. The feeding trough close. And it not opening back because hashtag Keat gone. And he not coming back. That is why among you have to be begging all over the place. 
go and look for some goddamn work. There is work around. We live in a society where the majority have become accustomed to laws not being enforced. And if they are, they are enforced against who does not support the political party in power or of a certain class in the society and not against the other. When we go to have our vehicles inspected, for instance, we are put through the rigors of the standard. Nothing wrong with that. That is fantastic. If perchance you omitted to wash down your engine and it is found to be somewhat dusty, you have failed and asked to return at another time. Yet for all, you can see vehicles on the road. Missing taillights. One working headlight. Indicator is smashed. Making all sorts of unacceptable noises while driven. And they have the current stickers affixed on them. What is this about? The law is to be enforced. As and if necessary. And not evenly across the board. That seems to be what we see. The traffic department of the police force would do well to realize the inconsistency is observed in broad daylight and shows them up as lacking in standards and integrity. I know what I'm telling you. As two to three years ago, I was failed because of not spraying off the dust from my engine of my somewhat modern vehicle. Sent packing to get it cleaned to return and join the long queue at Dusty Highway all over again. <laughs> I can tell you that some years ago, the government of Grenada was ordered to pay a certain businessman a certain sum in excess of $100,000 because he was arrested by a policeman who manhandled him while telling him words to the effect, quote, words to the effect, I'm not exactly, I'm paraphrasing, a fossa wanted one of you Lancer Pin Grenada white people, I'll catch you today, while giving him two of the best of his chonchon. Needless to say, the so-called offense was not arrestable, but instead of arresting the other person who clearly had assaulted the said man, the assaulted businessman was arrested instead. Does not, what does that not say about us? It's sad. That doesn't say much about us as a people. The poor, vulnerable working class has always been allowed to make a living at the expense of the hard working, law abiding citizen who have been doing everything within the law to make an honest dollar. Public order never matters to the poor, vulnerable, and working class here in Grenada because to a great extent, they were relegated to the vote farm and were exempt from enforcement of rules, laws, and public order between 1995 and 2022 for the most part. The oppression of the law-abiding citizens have been the norm here in Grenada for far too goddamn long. And the time has come for the law to be enforced for all. That is transformation. Everybody is getting a fair chance before the law to do the right goddamn thing. To evolve as any proper society should. Public health, public order and morality should have their day in the sun once more as the days of the vote farm mentality are over. Hashtag, Keat gone and he not coming back. Look at the fast rate at which vendors are taking up permanent residences all over this island. The number of vendors on Wall Street doubled the port highway used to have one or two booths on the side of the road from the time Minister Andy Williams came out and showed a rendition of a plan to build something and house people. Oh man, you see these boots started mushrooming 
as if when they plant them last night, they grow the next day. Brrr, to form a densely populated line for the entire length of the road from Tamsisi to the entrance of the port itself. Well, the planning authority finally has a mandate and the authority to do its work undisturbed by politicians. Low class, ordinary with an A, old niggers, who all your carelessness elected for so many goddamn years, who almost turned Grenada into Haiti just because they have to look for candidates, fresh candidates always for their vote farm. Folks, those days, uh, we have to say goodbye to them. And you see, because we are accustomed to chaos, we make in all sorts of goddamn noises. We can see even some so-called supporters of the party in power running off at the mouth while talking rubbish, as the Nigerians would say, about the poor and working class being displaced. All I can say is, Lord, put a hand. You see, the situation regarding law enforcement agencies not being allowed to do their work between 1995 and 2022, for the most part, because inferior elements posed as politicians always putting in positions people whom they could tell what to do and what not to do because of the political capital must stop. Now that the police, land development authority, and even physical planning, just to name a few, are empowered to do their work, any obstruction by politicians, any one of them, should be addressed with the law that addresses obstruction of a law enforcement officer's duties and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. In other words, they should be arrested and charged. We tired with this goddamn ghetto life. It is time for us to go up. Time for us to go up. All this nonsense must stop while this beautiful island continues to descend and take on an appearance of certain parts of Haiti or even Bangladesh. We are supposed to be a constitutional democracy governed by the rule of law for everyone, not just some. No more exemptions. Stop pushing the rights card when you are the first violator of the laws of the land. It is no one's right to violate the law just to make a living. Stop calling the politicians to help you out when you are operating outside of permission so to operate and function. Competing with legitimate businesses whose owners make the effort to operate lawfully while providing employment for your mothers, your fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, other relatives and friends. It is high time the entities set up to enforce the rules of public order in our society are left to do their goddamn work and stop this nonsense of blaming government when you are caught operating outside of the rules and the laws of the country. How are we ever going to get the chance to celebrate genuine national independence, especially after 50 years of not being able to truly celebrate, but to observe the annual occasion because of the lack of true and genuine progress? I always draw reference to Singapore. If we want to mimic any other country in the world, it must not be Trinidad. It must not be Jamaica, it must not be Haiti, and it must not be Bangladesh. No, we must mimic the best and strive to assume the level that Singapore is at 
by encouraging our people to seek to make their genuine contributions to nation building. Not enough of our past generations within the last 50 years did enough to plant the right trees in the right numbers to offer much needed shade for our current generation as has been the case for the people of Singapore. Grenada has too many takers and not enough givers. We have too many transactioners who match and measure what they do and give with the express purpose of getting something in return. We need to make sacrifices so that where we see, where we stand right now, for instance, in, in the future, wherever we can see where we can stand in the future, it must be somewhere desirable. desirable. It must not be this Willy, Jawa, any, just any old thing. Why can't we mimic Dubai? Why can't we? Singapore has no resources, but look at Singapore. I judged the country with the highest standard of living and quality of life. You know what the difference is? They have leadership. They didn't have no old teeth looking to see how much deals they could cut. No, they were totally against corruption. And that is why it's a model of a civilization today. That is who we must follow. We must not follow the, the old crooks of Africa. And for too damn long, we had one here looking just like them and behaving just like them. We must divorce ourselves totally from that kind of nastiness. We need to make sacrifices so that where we see where we are in the future, it must be more solid than where we stand today. If we start now, the generations to come will sing our praises and enjoy a much better standard of living and quality of life than the decrepit one so many live and exist in today. So when inferior minds would come to tell you and consider the introduction of public order as a must in order to stem the tide of this disorderly behavior, we see all too often where people feel to become self-employed means seizing or sponsored bus shelters and turning them into food stands, erecting undesirable structures anywhere and without running water and toilet, offering food for sale and alcohol without proper licenses, so to do, using every widened piece of road for vehicular use and driver's conveniences, to establish roadside garages, etc., etc., etc. And for anyone to consider that to be our culture, and that makes it all right because the poor man has to live to your head or to be properly examined because you ain't properly developed yet. Anyone who could think that that is okay is not fit to be a parent for, for fair that they inculcate in their children's minds, it is okay to break the law and do what they want. We're tired with that kind of rubbish living. Time to change that. It is so unfortunate that some known supporters of the current administration can be seen on social media ranting against public order because what obtains currently has become integral to our way of life. Shame on all of you. Here is where I give prominence to an extract from Thomas Paine's 1776 essay, Common Sense, when he wrote, quote, a long habit of not thinking out a thing wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right and raises at first a formidable outcry in defense of custom. But the tumult soon subsides. Time makes more converts than reason, unquote. You see, based on historical records, the people of Singapore for the first 10 years of independence from 1965 to 1975 were not happy at the changes either. But go and interview them now and hear what they have to tell you. Enjoying the spoils of excellent public order today, 
which have eliminated the struggles of perpetual low income, large, poor and vulnerable underclass, which could have only led to shanty tongues strewn all over the length and breadth of the old mosquito ridden trading posts of the British in Asia. They will never trade what they now enjoy with a reputation of being the single nation in the world to enjoy the highest standard of living and quality of life in the absence of any resources. But visionary leadership with the will to work for and on behalf of all the people and protect them from themselves and their abject ignorance. Allergy to what is right is not a valid argument against it. Let's take a break. It's starting to get hot under the collar, you notice. We have more to go for, so continue to stay tuned. Continue to stay tuned. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is Edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Take time and I write down all the things that I love on my island. Best believe the list gonna be like five miles long. Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest pills on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand for, we stand for. Oh, I am in the sun. Look at how we've grown, how far we've run. Fifty years we strong and more to come, more to come, more to come. Something I'm going higher. Fifty years we're blessed, we're pushing farther. Still reaching for more. Going up, going up, up and up, going up, going up, going up, going up, 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 as we aspire, build up ourselves, put people together. Bang, 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 it's only up. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wunderbar, wunderbar. The Germans just say wonderful, wonderful. So, we're back again. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Hit the share button and comment, like, love, join the edification community in active interaction. Remember also you can tag your friends, the new ones I'm talking to. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in the room today. You see, folks, generally, people forget everything and run. And that is an acronym for FAIR. And they don't understand. And they also hate. In other words, they behave horrible, angry, terrible and evil, H-A-T-E, -E, towards what they can't conquer. We must remember that over the years, many of us have lost trust in our leadership, which brought us to this place of lowly existence today. One would never believe that after the extended period of 1995 to 2022, for the most part, that a leader who served for the longest under our 50 years of national independence would have the only claim to fame, that of presiding over a totally decimated society where public order is no more. And for the sake of winning elections time and time again, relegating so many people to a life of 
poverty, deprivation, and vulnerability. While he invested in them with crumbs and scraps and placed them permanently on his vote farm. In just almost two short years, a new administration that replaced the decrepit one of the old nastiness has done so much good to show the nation that it is possible for someone to lead our nation in the interest of all. Folks, it is said that the strength of leadership is judged by the trust it commands. We should all nurture it with integrity and transparency and see how it becomes our most powerful ally in steering the much needed change that we so desperately seek. We are tired of the people who pose as leaders and invaded our lives while practicing unnecessary evil. They lied to our faces and continue to lie as they can't help it. These are the same people who are given, even if their foundational truth was never good, people forgive them. Ask the many who were cheated on by these same people. Even when they never withheld their affection, they manipulated so many. Even when so many of us were generous with no stipulation. What a pity. People who don't know our history with these people judge us as stuck up, standoffish, and guarded. Little do they know that this season of our life, we ain't got time for phony people because we can no longer jump through hoops and we refuse to be circus animals. We are now too damn grown for all that nonsense. The way we operate, we are saying with our lives, if you don't like us, don't speak to us. We are now at a place where we have to deal with everyone on their level. We are now at a place where how check bring itself so you give it blue. And that is why me for one would tell you when you're coming for me, come good or don't come at all. I follow quite a bit of positive vibes online. And so I could consider myself a person who craved knowledge and would do anything to continuously expand my vault of knowledge as it aids me in the conduct of my motivational training deliveries. I follow Jim Ram, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Brendan Burchard, Joel Austin, Joshua Salman, Jay Shetty. That, that's just to name a few. And the truth is, I get so much inspiration from their work that I actually feel the difference in my life through my thinking. I cannot imagine anyone with access to smart devices who would use them for puerile purposes only as against using them as aids to rise in their thinking and thus life. I learned to appreciate that sometimes, you know, people who are supposed to be our enemies they do a lot more to promote us than even our friends. If my critics were not as vocal against me, I would not be compelled to keep moving away from society to concentrate more on becoming and evolving as I have been. I would not have been inclined to cling on to spirituality and become so rooted and centered with a close relationship to my inner higher consciousness. If the old nastiness, for instance, did not try with special zeal to destroy me, I would not have known what I was made of. Because I did more than survive. To a great extent, the efforts of the old nastiness were never allowed to prosper, giving life to the biblical prose. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He and his disciples and otherwise agents thought they were going to stop me, destabilize me, turn me into a bankrupt, otherwise intimidate me. What they did not realize is that God used them 
to turn on my fire on the inside. Any one of you listening to me today who had similar experiences as dished out by that old nastiness and all his ambassadors and you never succumbed, you realize that you owe your antagonists a great big thank you for proving you to be stronger than you ever thought you were capable of being. Those people helped us to become victors and not victims. Through our ability to pray bold prayers, stay strong and fight the good fight of faith. They meant it for harm, but God used it for our advantage. Folks, quit complaining about the opposition in your life. The people trying to push you down and make you look bad. That's the opposition in your life. They don't control your destiny. You may be in a funk today. People coming against you. Your health presents some challenges. And things seem dark and discouraging. You don't see how any of these things can work out. Stay in faith, I beg you. Those things would not have been allowed if they were not intended to move you to your destiny. They are strengthening you, giving you that tenacity to hold on. So when anyone tells you, as I have been told by the old nastiness in December of 1998, I'm going to destroy you. Do like me. Ask them if they are God. And then dare them to try. None of us have any right to be afraid of anyone. The devils of this world are roaring lions, not biting ones. Some of these said roaring lions are so darn old. They have no goddamn teeth of their own. Folks, with some serious focus, you will become unstoppable. Notwithstanding the distractions that come your way, the greater the mission of your life is the greater the distractions that come. Ignore them and trudge along to your destiny. Always remember, it does not matter who you are. What you say, there are going to be some people who just don't like you. The people who don't like you are not interested in truth. What they're interested in is finding some lie that they can latch on to and accelerate to try and paint a negative picture of you. Because they don't like you. Do like me. Shave as many of your acquaintances as possible. So none of them can come close. To repeat any nonsense. People may tell them. Are making any sense folks? Come on. I must be making sense. Because people come with nonsense. But filter. I once heard a speaker ask. What do you get when you squeeze an orange? Of course, you get the juice it once held in it. Well, he said pressure reveals character. So what comes out of us when we are squeezed? Our ability to become resilient under pressure dictates when our integrity will be compromised. The pressure causes us to lash out and explode when all we may really need to do is explain. Whenever we are asked to describe ourselves to other people, we describe ourselves at our best. The challenge is we are not always at our best. While we have the potential to be awesome at all times, under pressure, we can be awful. In fact, we know people who are just awful all the time, whether under pressure or not. Hey, the old nastiness is chief among them. The journey will be different for all of us. Even though it starts in the same place. Ask ourselves. How am I likely to pop under pressure? Even though we may not be able to prevent ourselves from exploding in the absence of finding our triggers. Folks, you cannot be part of a nation run by a leader who has a bunch of unresolved trauma and not be hurt by the way he leads. His unresolved trauma will show up in the way he leads. Look at the old nastiness, for instance, and the way he led. Look at the trauma in his memory 
of his shipping agent's experience some 50 odd years ago. And the many people who came forward to help him avoid jail and how ungrateful he was to many of them, starting with Maurice Bishop, a man who would later become Grenada's most accomplished prime minister in such a short space of time. Many of you who have become victims of the old nastiness end up walking with a limp and being scarred for life by your very appearance from miles off, even though you have not been injured like him because you followed him. So you inhaled him and you catch what he have. You see, if you are smart, you will not allow yourselves to get too close to any such traumatized and severely injured person, far less a leader. When you believe in yourself, you tend to be a lot more self-aware and protective of your peace. You don't put yourself in harm's way. You know what company to be in and when to take your exit when the usefulness of that company has been outlived. So people have to understand that you are just built differently. You're cut from a different cloth. If anyone else were in your shoes, they would have folded a long time ago. You must be so actualized in who you are that you can shout to the mountain top with confidence. I am different. I don't want to be like nobody else. You just embrace who God has made you to be. Folks, I have learned a long time now that people rarely change. They mostly become more of who they are. Some people say rich people are rude. No, their riches only shore up what they had in them because they could not be rude if they were not rude. Some people have been a certain way for so long that they've started to look like how they look, that like how they are. They can be either good or bad. You know, the thing is with us today, because our members of society for the most part are programmed, to be jealous, envious, malicious, caustic, selfish, wicked, and generally negative. We see many of them looking that way from miles off. What a pity is there so few who are gentle, genuinely positive, considerate, loving, caring, and kind. For they too can be seen from miles off. There is a sad reality in folks that many people ask for forgiveness simply because they were caught. If they were not caught, oh God, they will continue to proceed unabated. We have to be careful who we show the physical source of our bread for fear that they seek out the baker and kill him and bond the bakery. We pardon weakness, but we cut off wickedness. If anyone attempted to poison you before and you survived, you can go ahead and forgive them but do not collect food from their hands anymore. Isn't that interesting? You see, love is for man and trust is for the God of the universe. When I see so many people who are generally supposed to know better, liking an obviously traumatized individual unthinkingly, just because he's a leader, without a care as to his consistency, to never pretend to be good. I wonder about those who like him. Such people cannot be morally centered themselves. Their support for that old nastiness over the years and continuing have them complaining about the society his poor leadership has presided over for so long. What is the result? Total decimation, which they would love the new government to find solutions for all of a sudden. I remember talking with one of Grenada's top leaders who enjoyed a stage position, but otherwise is in business. Imagine the complaint was about the quality of people that we have to choose as employees on offer here today and their lack of interest in really being productive and working honestly for their day's wage. 
I had to tell the person, but you are in a position to fix that by virtue of the influence you now peddle at the level of the state. Why isn't this a conversation you are having in the right places? This deterioration did not happen in a vacuum. It is presided over by the person who gave you your position that you hold. And it is encouraged to a great extent because it suits his purpose. And your silence aids and abets it. That person has been cold with me since. You see, the old nastiness has always been open and frank about not being good. He won't even make a mistake to do something positive. He demonstrates this by his every action daily and worse yet, since losing the last general election. He gets an A for consistency and for never pretending. Sympathizers, enablers and beneficiaries, among whom are several people who ought to know better, like ministers of religion and priests, a few lawyers, doctors, teachers, principals, senior public servants, business owners, and several people with a modicum of supposed good sense, always making excuses for that old nastiness, telling you what? That is not what he mean. Why is this? I don't believe in Obia. But some of them, when you hear their response, and their justification for liking the old nastiness by virtue of their continued insistence on following him. They threaten my own belief system. Folks, in a recent post by Ali Mathura, <clears throat> a very consistent, faithful Grenadian who stands in the gap for the Deacon Mitchell administration, come rain or shine, a short clip of the old nastiness complaining about how things bad for certain people who can't put food on their table and can't find work and are not taken care of by the current administration because they simply don't care about people. It dawned on me that these people he's talking about were the confirmed poor and vulnerable on the vote farm that he, the old nastiness, were used to feeding off the treasury trough and who were taught not to work. I go take care of you. But to sit down and wait for handouts. <clears throat> well, the new sheriff in town has a new modus operandi, which is governed by the philosophy that people must work for what they want to eat. They must work if they want to get paid. Of course, it goes without mentioning that you will be paid according to your level. Don't sit down there and tell nobody you want a little $3,000 because $3,000 only have one size. There's not a little one and there's not a big one. There's not a medium-sized one. So you wanting a little $3,000, go and get your head full with things that matter so you can qualify it. Qualify, sorry, to get this three thousand little three thousand dollars you're looking for. Good. If you are at the lower end of the wage scale, until and unless you lift your level and standard that you want to live at, you will have to be paid your worth. So if you work nothing, that is what you will be paid. These new days since twenty third June twenty twenty two call for a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. The act of climbing on each other's backs and eating at the national trough, the treasury that is, they are over. That is why I say hashtag Keith gone and he not coming back. We have to see to it that that old nastiness never sees the office of prime minister. Again, if the old nastiness were really and truly as accomplished as he would like us to think, he ought to be following a more dignified path with his afterlife from power. Could you imagine a past prime minister who should be a statesman material, very much on his way 
to the golden ripe age of 80, finding himself fighting up in the most undignified of manners every day, trying to regain power at any cost? What is that about? I don't think I really am truly. Sometimes I have to pinch myself to make sure I'm alive experiencing this thing, you know. He should relegate himself to a backseat role, preparing to be knighted and enjoying himself in much-deserved retirement, traveling the world with his young wench of a faceless, nameless monster, whining and dining without any stutters in paying his bills because of the endless proceeds amassed over the years, starting at the Grenada shipping agents in the early 70s. But when he believes, or behaves rather, like the, <clears throat> the old commoner, slack and viperous, with loads of evil intentions towards the decent Prime Minister, Deacon Mitchell, but we finally elected to replace his inferior style of leadership. You could imagine honoring that. Oh, Jesus help you. I sure it will have a lot of backlash. If any attempt is made at honoring that old nastiness, oh, Gid, I just pray and trust this never happens. I joined Sawandi to wish him a long enough life so we could hear the official declaration that he has lost his mind in truth and in fact. Because he started already in retribution for all his sins against this nation and the decent citizens. He used his power of the office of prime minister to seek to diminish and this I declare to be well declared punishment for this old nastiness. It is thanks to the old nastiness we have a nation that can be aptly described as operating with people at the highest levels, whether in the private or public sector as follows, who have capacity, lack ambition, who have ambition, lack capacity. Sadly, the majority fall in the category of people with the total package those with nothing at all. Folks, this about sums up our situation from where I sit, and it is really sad. That is why I tell you, allergy to what is right is not a valid argument against it. Let's take a last break here, and we come back with the final segment. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This is Edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The strength of views and opinions expressed during edification are not necessarily a reflection or representation of the sponsors and or affiliates of this program. I want the best for my family, so every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, 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 mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, or chicken. I just don't know my family is in the same hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. It could take time and I write down. All the things that I love from my Ina Best believe my list gonna be like five miles long Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song The cleanest beers on the waters Friendly people meet in every corner Togetherness and love is what we stand for We stand for, yeah. we stand for Oh, I am in this song Look at how we've grown, how far we've run. Fifty years we strong and more to come, more to come, more to come. Going higher. Fifty years we're blessed with ocean fire. Still reaching for more. Going up, going up, 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 as we aspire, build up ourselves for people together. Bang, 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 slowly up. Eddie Frederick.
has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, of course, we're on to a home stretch now, folks. Very important that we get this one here right. Let me just get this together. Um, yes. So we have that all lined up. So, so for those of you who are extra late, of course, see if you can ask somebody to dress wrong and get your seat, pull up your chair, and let's take this light, this, this last one here uh, going. Um, the late Winston White received a send-off fit for his contribution to the nation's politics over the years. The well-spoken patrician from that great parish of St. Patrick who was always proud of his heritage, was well celebrated by his children, relatives, and friends. And just anyone who knew him and found it necessary to pay their last respects in person and even online. The glaring downside to the tribute paid to him was delivered by none other than the old nastiness himself. A woman who is known to be very quiet and staid with her political opinions was incensed by the word salad of untruths told about Winston in the house of the Lord, according to her. This said woman told me, this man has no respect for people and worse yet, the house of the Lord. She's today happy that her eyes opened a long time now to the real nature of this crook, her words. So he could sit and listen, she could sit and listen to him and know that he really is not a good person and not good a very long time now. Every opportunity the old nastiness gets to throw words to his main challenger, that he is not to be challenged for the leadership of his party, he does. And Winston's funeral was no exception. The madame said she could not believe that the old nastiness believes that everyone who was alive when Winston White, Reynold Benjamin, Keith Braveboy, and Finton de Berg were active members of the 18 wing of the NNP. That Winston was never considered the leader of that group. Winston was never known to have challenged him for any leadership of the party. The A-team collectively and consistently challenged his leadership style, leading to their fallout and falling apart. But his fixation on sending a message always to his main challenger for leadership of the party, which is long overdue, and, and you know, the, the changing of the guard, clouds his memory, thus causing him to show signs that he has started to lose his mind indeed, resulting in total disrespect for the house of the Lord and even people old enough to know the truth. A WhatsApp note in wide circulation confirms that the A-team leader was none other than Reynold Benjamin, and he may be willing, willing to tell the world that Winston White never ever challenged the old nastiness for the leadership of the NNP. How is it that this inferior element always seems to get away with lies upon lies to this nation? Because he knows among you not paying attention. It is because you start to pay attention that many of you are getting in agreement that he really ain't good and ain't good long. Interestingly, the old nastiness always gets his main challenger to ride along with the tomfoolery that all is well within the ranks of the leadership of the National Nasty Party, the NNP. In a side of the road rum shop, the old nastiness was asked by a certain business operative why he does not hand over the leadership of the party to the main challenger. When he became ballistic and ranted and raved in response, showing hate 
and total disgust for him. The main challenger, that is. The man said he thought the old nastiness would have started to fraught at the mouth. Foss, he was indignant and angry. Yet for all, the main challenger can be seen appearing on platforms with him, keeping up appearances as if all is well with him. Folks, don't fall for that. People are sure that the family of the late Winston White must have had their regrets for giving that old nastiness a spot in the tributes. Take no offense, family White. You exposed him. That's all. And we thank you for that. Even in death, Winston White, God rest his soul, gave us the final opportunity to see who this devil really is. Folks, if you only would continually put yourselves out to find out and know the things and areas of your ignorance, whenever you find an area that you don't know anything about, you must not just stand and stare. You must get up and get. Stop pitying yourself because of fatigue and laziness. Go and find out so you can drive that ignorance away as fast as possible. In our neck of the woods, like in Africa, according to Joshua Selman, there is something called a local champion mentality. Where in a small group of mediocres, you are the highest, wisest and most enlightened. This cancer of local champion mentality has destroyed the preachers, pastors, priests, Bishops, business people, politicians, and people who would have otherwise been great because of their arrival mentality. We have arrived. Most of these local champions have no claim to fame, are of absolutely no moment. Nobody knows them. They have no influence, no power, no grace. Such people have failed in almost every area of their life. Yet for all, they want to position themselves as commentators of destiny. I would like to conclude with something sent to me while I was preparing my delivery here today, for today. Marcel, I want to thank you very much. You are always on time with your sharing from Father Dan. Quote, when the evil men become more courageous and bolder than good men, Darkness begins to reign. It's up to us to choose not to be defeated by evil and darkness, not to be overwhelmed by negative news, rather to stand positive, calm and firm. The children of light must not be intimidated, but must stand together, focused and determined. Truth and justice have been threatened by wickedness and greed. We must make a choice. Dare to fix things or chicken out, unquote. An authentic Christian is a dedicated and committed Christian. As people of the dominant African ancestors, we need to return to our spiritual base and divorce ourselves from the rubbish of European style Christianity through their introduction of religion to us. We, the children of the light, should never surrender to the thought that we correct, we are correct to use the word religion and spirituality interchangeably. We are dead wrong. Africans, and by extension, us Caribbean people, who are mostly children of the ancestors, are spiritual, and that is not unique to us. We are spiritual because we believe we are temporal beings. And that there is a superior spiritual being to us all. As mortal beings, we understand that we have limitations. And that there is an imminent creator. That truth must be told to our people. So that they can learn to distinguish by contrasting the qualities between spirituality and religiosity. As Professor Patrick Lumumba of Kenya tells us. Quote. 
What our European colonizers brought was religion, spirituality packaged in man-made form. And that is why we have things called Roman Catholic, Anglican, Presbyterian, Wesleyan, Epics, Episcopalian, etc. That is religion as we know it, an organization of spirituality into a formal thing which is controlled by man claiming to represent God. So the word spiritual must never be used as if it were synonym of religion, unquote. So you see why none of them can fool me? When I speak, none of them talk back because they know they are involved in a sham which they have encouraged in many of our people who now have religion as what I declare a nasty habit as it changes nothing for them. So much religion around us. And many people still have to be told it is wrong to kill their mother. Even with all the Ten Commandments, many of our religiously inclined people live as if they added one more. Do otherwise to the command of all ten of them and make sure you are not caught. So the eleventh commandment was born. Thou shalt not get caught. Folks, as a society, we have to take stock of ourselves and realize that change is here and we need to adapt and be absorbed. Obey the law of the land. Stop pushing the rights card. We have these failed politicians walking around now in opposition who did nothing for those people who were squatting and breaking the law under the past, under their administration for all of the 23 years they were in government. They did nothing to improve these people's lot. But right now, walking around, calling and saying, about rights. So to break the law, just to make a living, and the law being enforced is going against the rights of people. We who know better folks need to tell them, call them out, and tell them, go to hell, because that's where they all belong. Allergy to what is right is not a valid argument against it. And I'm firm on that. So folks, I'm in. I'm out and I'm gone. Thanks for joining. Continue to share. See you next week at the same time and same place for more extraordinary programming. Until then, I want you to stay safe, stay well, remain vigilant and lifted. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in the name Edward or Eddie Frederick. Subscribe, like, and share. And be prepared to receive your mental multivitamins as straight up as I deliver them. Toodlevu, folks, have a wonderful week. And for those of you whose minds have been changed, go out and look for work. Because we are making no joke. Those of us who are standing in the gap, we will call you out. The days of poor and vulnerable are over. Otherwise, line up in diamond. Go and queue up in diamond. He that have among you so, let him feed among you. But no more of that on a national level. The feeding trough is closed. The national treasury is to run the country's business. It is not for you to line up to get handouts because the vote farm is closed. To the level, folks, have a great day. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. This has been Edification, made possible by the efforts of the Center for Democracy and Good Governance, CDGG. The Center for Democracy and Good Governance is a sound organization established to promote and strengthen democracy. For too long now, or generally perceived poorly educated electorate, have fallen victim to the cheap and inferior propaganda of those seeking to hold others captive under the guise of democracy. Gladly, the CDGG uses edification to help to actively pursue a sustainable approach to reorient our people towards the importance of electing and selecting people of good character to public life. Through edification, we will highlight the importance of education appropriate.
appropriate to our development, proper health care and facilities as our right, respect for law and order, not to mention upgrading our people's thinking so they could become qualified participants in the democratic process to their advantage. After all, Grenada's national constitution makes allowances for the ideal of free men to enjoy freedom from fear and want, which can be best achieved if conditions are created whereby everyone may enjoy his economic, social and political, civil and cultural rights. I want the best for my family. So every meal has to be perfect. Every bite has to say, mm, mm, mm. There's no doubt in my mind that the best in frozen meats and vegetables has to come from the country cold store. Hams, turkeys, sausages, beef, pork, chicken. I just don't know my family is in safe hands. Thank you, country cold store, for being there for us for the past 40 years. The country cold store, providing the best in frozen meats and vegetables since 1969. Attention all forward-thinking companies. Sure, you can do with a continuous positive boost to your image and impact your bottom line. Hiring the right people with the right attitude and mindset is where to start. Even if you did not get it right through your current hiring methods, we can help develop the right mindset for your current employees. If you think training is expensive, try not training, and you will experience a perpetual downward spiral in patronage on account of increased dissatisfied customers. Take things into your hands and engage the best at motivation and customer care training with a tried and tested track record. Visit www.efrederick.com now and learn how you can change the atmosphere in your business and improve the customer experience for everyone who does business with you. Spice Island Beach Resort and Belmont Estate are two such local entities of world renown that have benefited tremendously from ongoing customer care, social skills, and motivation training. Training changes everything for the better for any business and every team member. Enhance employee performance through increased awareness and passion for the job at hand. Greater potential in your workforce awaits you through engaged, high-energy training that works. Log on now, www.efrederick.com. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Inspiration, motivation, great advice, and biting opinion pieces as only Eddie Frederick can deliver. Can deliver, can deliver, can deliver. Eddie Frederick has got it all. Take time and I write down All the things that I love on my island Best believe the list gonna be like five miles long Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song. The cleanest beers on the waters. Friendly people meet in every corner. Togetherness and love is what we stand for. We stand yeah. for. 